Welcome to Soil Science and Management Chapter 14 and today we're going to talk about fertilizers. So after we complete this chapter we're going to be able to distinguish all the different forms of fertilizer, what uh, fertilizer sources are for each nutrient, how to perform some uh, fertilizer calculations, um, how to use those fertilizers, and then uh, list some effects that those fertilizers have on the soil. So basically a fertilizer is uh, in, um, typically uh, a material that is applied to the soil to supply some essential element. Um, they can be uh, minerals, they can be organic, they can be a synthetic organic, they can be an inorganic. All of these different forms are very common um, forms of a fertilizer. Um, <clears throat> you know, we think about uh, fertilizer and, and basically, you know, those synthetic organic petroleum based fertilizers that come in 12, 12, 12 or 15, 15, 15. But there are so many other things that you can put out that are inorganic or um, even organic material. Uh, one of the things that has been around for quite a while is something called malorganite, which is basically a, an organic fertilizer that is uh, more or less the waste product of the Milwaukee wastewater treatment plants. And uh, this has been used for years and years and years to get um, fertilizer into the ground as well as um, biosolids and organic material to help with um, biological activity within the soil. So <clears throat> there are uh, a few different forms. Uh, there are liquid um, applications or pressurized liquid. There are um, liquid applications. There are dry and there are slow release. So uh, pressurized liquids um, is basically uh, injected into the soil and anhydrous ammonia is very common to do this. Now anhydrous ammonia is a very 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 potent ammonia source and this is typically done um, either highly diluted or before you plant your plants allowing that ammonia to um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? not neutralize but um, uh, become a little bit more uh, less active in the soil and then uh, in golf course applications very common is a uh, is fluid or liquid these are applied with uh, <clears throat> either can be applied inside the uh, irrigation system or can be sprayed on with a uh, uh, right on uh, uh, sprayer uh, sometimes you use fertilizers and, and certain pesticides at the same time these can be um, combined applications um, also there are dry and this can be something that's pulverized into a powder, there are granulars, there's prills. These are um, typically applied directly to the soil and uh, using some sort of a measuring device and metering de or metering device. And there's also a uh, slow release, um, uh, water activated. These are going to be um, um, like, a, like a, a, a granule that has some sort of coating that will allow the uh, material to dissolve slowly, continuing to feed the plants for a longer period of time. <clears throat> so um, there are um, various carriers that are uh, important for these uh, different nutrients. So nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, they all have, have specific carriers. Um, nitrogen, we've talked about that, that's ammonium. That's uh, nitrate. Uh, potassium is a myriad of potash. Um, there are uh, phosphate um, ions. And then each one of these secondary elements and the trace elements also have certain carriers that will release the nutrients that the plants can uptake. Um, plants don't typically take uh, pure elements up into their, uh, uh, through their osmosis, they typically take a, a ion or a compound something that they have um, access to. Um, just because the compound has nitrogen in it, for example, doesn't mean that the plant can use it. Um, there's plenty of, of compounds that can the plants will just reject because the nitrogen is unavailable to them in those certain compounds. <clears throat> Sometimes um, these fertilizers can be made by mixing several of these different carriers. Um, as I stated before, 
some of the common, uh, you know, triple 12, a triple 15, something we used to use quite a bit of was a six 2020. This is basically um, percentages of the different carriers within that bag of fertilizer um, in the following order, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, or NPK. And um, those triple 15s are, are great for, you know, uh, golf course applications where you're trying to look for uh, just a general application of, of food, whereas that 62020 is really a great starter food. So if you're uh, seeding and you would like to have um, good sustained growth through the germination process, that 62020 is great because it has just a little bit of nitrogen to kind of push, but the phosphorus and potassium are able to really make the plant grow strong. Um, typically, the contents of the fertilizers do not equal 100. So, as I've showed you, the last two examples, um, triple 15, that is uh, approximately 45% of the total of the plant, of the, excuse me, of the uh, of the fertilizer, and then uh, 6 20 that's 46%, and um, so that's 46% nutrients and uh, 60, or excuse me, 54% other in ingredients. Whereas in this example on the screen here is a triple 10. And so that means there's 70% other ingredients and typically those are um, binders or slow release agents. Sometimes they're um, wetting agents to help get those um, uh, nutrients into certain areas. Um, so, Nitrogen is, is listed as, a, as in its elemental form, whereas phosphorus and potassium are listed in their oxidized forms. Um, these are these are how the, the plant um, materials are listed. <clears throat> so typically when you uh, do some math, you have to take into account, or they may have taken into account how much of that, for example, myriad of potash K2O has, um, a little bit of oxygen in there and so that could be a a conversion where you're converting back to the amount of potassium that you're trying to put down so it's really important to, to select the proper fertilizer for your proper application um, what is your crop what is your plant what time of year are you trying to do this um, what kind of method can you do this are you are you trying to put this out in a slow release form. Um, really important is how much does the fertilizer cost? I've uh, run into several times in the golf course industry where we really wanted to put out a certain fertilizer, but uh, petroleum costs had gone up quite uh, staggering and, and we had to put out something completely different. And it, you know, it still works, still does the job, but it's not exactly the application that we were hoping to put out um something really uh, important to consider here is is do you want to use an organic material um, some of the organic fertilizers have a very um, small uh, percentage of nutrients in them but it's kind of by design because those nutrients have to be broken down further so they are in essence a soil release fertilizer because of the continued processing that is done within the soils by the micro uh, nutrients that uh, need to break down those uh, varying organic materials. <clears throat> so there are a couple simple rules for when you're going to want to pick um, certain fertilizers. Uh, nitrates work best in your spring with your cool season crops. Uh, ammonia is great for your fall. Um, uh, fall applications good to put your, your grass to bed in the winter time um, and then nitrates great for container plants uh, basically you don't want to have a lot of ammonium in your container plants because they can start to smell they start to smell like um, rotting uh, grass clippings excuse me and then uh, ammonium nitrate Ammonium nitrogen is good for um, acid loving plants because the ammonium starts to break down into uh, uh, varying types of acids. So 
it's good for those plants to kind of have that comfort level of liking to be in, in with a little bit of acid. And then, <clears throat> like I just spoke earlier, um, fertilizers, they fluctuate in price from year to year and even from season to season. So understanding when things go up, um, you know, certain times of the year with uh, lots of holidays, petroleum prices go up and so does um, the cost of making fertilizer. So you have to take that into account when you are selecting the fertilizer you'd like to use. So there are uh, different times that you want to apply your fertilizer. You can fertilize before you plant. So you can have some drawbacks to that is um, some of the nitrogen will leach away. Um, not all of it is, is available near the seedlings. Um, it does bring the soil fertility to a good level before you plant that those plants. You can uh, you can add in as much of the phosphorus and potassium as you need. There are a few different ways to do this. That's going to be broadcast either with liquid or a granular product, or you can inject it directly into the soil. Also, uh, how I've always done uh, my plantings is fertilizing at the same time. This uh, makes sure that you get the uh, nutrients near the seedlings where they would like it. Helps to uh, ensure you get a good pop of the so of the seeds. The seeds are able to grasp onto those nutrients quite quickly, and then they are able to grow quite healthily as quickly as possible. <laughs> um, fertilizing after applications. Uh, one disadvantage that I've always noticed is that sometimes plants can uh, not uh, have enough nutrients in the soil and the seedlings can stress themselves out. Unfortunately, in, in some of the uh, times that it stresses themselves out, they don't grow as well. Uh, once that plant has been established, obviously a fertilizing is, is great. This is going to be the best time. There are all different kinds of applications. You have granular applications. You can use your fertigation system. You can spray it on, on a, uh, using foliar feeding. There's uh, a numerous different ways of fertilizing your plants once they're established in the soil. So, um, very important to understand is anytime you're applying fertilizers, it's going to alter the pH or the acidity of the soil. And uh, some common uh, things to remember, any kind of ammonium fertilizer is going to lower your pH. The nitrate fertilizers are going to raise your pH. So that could be um, a good way of, if you have a, a certain time of year or you have a, a certain type of soil that is either high in pH or low in pH, you can pick your nitrogen fertilizer based on which one will um, help you to correct or fix that problem. Um, salinity is a is another important uh, thing to consider because basically you're putting in salt anytime you're putting in um, a fertilizer is, is is a adding to the total dissolved solids of the of the uh, of the of the soil. So you want to make sure that you're only applying what you want what you want to apply. You don't ever want to over apply, and you got to make sure that you are very careful while you are mixing or uh, 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 adding fertilizer to a to a application device because if you spill uh, fertilizer in an area, uh, grass or whatever it is that you're trying to grow there, could take um, a year or two <clears throat> to uh, come back in those areas because of the amount of salts that will load into those areas. <coughs> in this chapter, we talked about fertilizer and how it's utilized, what it can be used, different application methods uh, and different uh, application types. So I thank you for joining me and I uh, will see you next time.